Now, I'm going to tell you a dream that I had five or six years ago. People that have been around have heard me tell this dream uh, before because it was very significant. Um, but before I tell you the dream, I'm going to tell you an experience um, that, uh, around the same time that happened when Apostle Tom and I went over to do the, the conference over in Hawaii. Our church people know that we go over every year and we do a prophetic conference. I know. Everybody say, oh, I know it's really sad. We have to go to all the way to Hawaii to do a conference, but somebody really has to do it. Okay. So we volunteered and we're just those kind of people, but we learned years ago to go in a few days early and um, have a few days of fun before the work really starts because it is a lot of work. They, it's, it's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work. And so Whenever we get over there, my husband decides, now we live in flat Florida, but my husband decides that we are mountain climbers. We do not climb mountains, okay, but he has decided that we are mountain climbers. We've climbed to the top of Diamond Head. We've climbed to the top of Cocoa Head. Does anybody know what Cocoa Head is? It's like straight up like this. He tried to kill me that day. Okay. And so the next year when we went back, I said, I said, I just told him, he said, come on, baby, you can do it. I said, just go ahead. I'll do it in my own pace. Okay. <laughs> so he made it to the top much faster than I did. Okay. Um, so the next year I said, babe, I know you want to go hiking, but can we just do something easier? Is that a good compromise? Okay, easier. Okay, we'll hike, but easier. So we heard about this hike up the Manoa Valley, and it's kind of down behind Honolulu, back in the mountains that are tucked in there, and it's a, it is a valley. It's a beautiful, beautiful valley with these trees that look prehistoric. It's phenomenal. Um, and so we, we took off on the trail. It was probably about 4.30, 5 o'clock maybe in the afternoon, but the sun was staying up till like 7.30 or so, um, that that night and so it was supposed to be about up 45 minutes up and 45 minutes back so we took off up the trail and I mean it was it was um the trail was kind of wet because because it had rained it was muddy and there was this one place in the trail that you really had to navigate because um on this side was like a wall but on this side was like a 30 foot ravine that if you slipped you know, you're going off into the ravine. So you had to pay attention to where you were stepping. But we got all the way back to the end of the trail, took some pictures at the waterfall, and we turned around and we started coming back. And this is where we learned our first lesson of the day is that it gets darker in the valley quicker than it gets darker on the beach. You understand where I'm going with this? Suddenly... Nightfall came very quickly, and pretty soon it wasn't just dusk. It was pitch black on this trail, like literally could not see my hand in front of my face. And so knowing that there's a 30-foot ravine we could fall down, how many think I might have been just a little bit hesitant? So he's like, come on, babe, we got to go. And I'm like, I can't go because I can't see where I'm walking. And he'd be like, but we got to go. And I'm like, we could sleep here tonight because I can't see where we're going. So maybe we just have to sleep here tonight. And he disagreed. He didn't want to sleep in the woods, okay? Um, and so we didn't really know what to do because it was as, I mean, as dark as dark can be. And I couldn't see my path. And so I was stuck. And I think that many people in the body of Christ are in this situation because it got darker quicker than anybody was anticipating. And many people in the church are stuck and can't move forward because of the darkness. They're paralyzed by fear. Now you have to know dark was never my friend. I had a major issue with the dark, a major fear of the dark. I don't have time to go into that, but God did deliver me out of it until he put me in the middle of a path that was dark. And so many people have felt stuck because of the darkness. And so we're standing there wondering what are we going to do because we obviously can't see our way forward. A lot of people feel like I've got all these great prophecies, I've got all this great passion, but I can't see my way forward. And so as we stood there, all of a sudden it dawns on us. We have iPhones in our back pocket. However, 
They were old iPhones that did not have flashlights. I know, well, we, we kept those phones for a very long time. <laughs> but they did not have flashlights. So you know what we did? We stood there in the dark and downloaded a flashlight app. Come on, when it's too dark to feel like you know how to move forward, sometimes what we got to do is we got to stop and download the light of the Lord, the glory of God, the revelation that God sends, and download it into our spirit so that we know how to move forward. Now, I will tell you that the iPhone 4, it's a long, old phone. The iPhone 4, even when you downloaded the app, the light was pitiful. It was like a little pin light. So we put our two little lights together, and guess what? With those two little lights, we were able to start moving forward. And here's when I learned lesson number two. A little bit of light drives out a whole lot of darkness. Amen? You, you might feel like, what can I do in the midst of all this darkness? I'm telling you, shine. Let the glory shine out of you. Let the glory of God just begin to shine out of you. Because what it did is it gave us an opportunity to start navigating forward in the time of darkness and find our feet. How many know the word says, my word will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. And so we slowly started making our way down the woods, down the, down the trail through the middle of the woods. And at this time, Maybe we were going to get home by midnight because we were going really slow, okay? But we, it was very slippery, very slow, but we were, but we were moving. Some people are, are stuck in the paralysis of analysis and you're not moving. Guess what? Sometimes you got to get a little light going and get moving. You say, well, I don't have all my questions answered. That's okay. Get moving. God answers questions as you start to move. How can God lead you if you're not going anywhere? Okay, and so as we're going down this path, suddenly, everybody say suddenly. How many have been believing God for some suddenlies? Okay, how many have figured out suddenlies don't always happen suddenly? They usually happen after a really, really long time of praying for something, and then suddenly, right? So suddenly, out of the woods comes these two Hawaiians, and they've got flashlights strapped to their forehead. They're not on the trail. They're just out in the woods somewhere, and they are booking. You know, they just come out of the woods from nowhere. They're, they've got these flashlights on their head. They walk up to us. They said, looks like you could use some help. They both reach into their backpack and hand each of us these giant flashlights, like the, like the head of the flashlights, this big, and then they take off down the trail. And we're like, were, were those angels? <laughs> so we call them our Hawaiian angels, okay? Um, they were waiting at the end of the trail for their flashlights. I don't know if angels would really want their flashlights back, but, um, but they showed up at our time of need, and they helped us. They were angels for us, that's right. So we call them our Hawaiian angels, okay? And we made it down the trail. Guess what happened? When they gave us those big flashlights, suddenly we were able to accelerate. 